the low end of uh, fats for me in a day was like 30%. The most I've ever eaten in a day was like 70-ish percent. The average was like 50%. So a lot of what I ate was fats. And then I'd say maybe like 20 to 30% was proteins. And then the remainder was carbs. So that's just the way my body felt drawn. But truly, like you, you can gain the weight by eating the carbohydrates. But if you want to gain, if you want to gain weight in um, a more desirable distribution, you should actually eat the fat. Um, fat does not make you fat. <laughs> that is something that I really want to say. We got to break against the anti-fat propaganda. Fat does not make you fat. It is Celesia here. I am so excited to make this video and as the title suggests, I'm going to be talking about how I went from 127 pounds in December of 2022 to 160 pounds in June of 2023. Uh, for reference, I am 5 feet 10 inches tall, so when I was 127 pounds, I was 17% body fat. I was underweight, I felt skeletal, I, I was not healthy. Um, and this is when I stopped being a vegan, um, as that way of eating had caused me uh, real damages to my health. Um, my body, I couldn't sustain it. it. It is not for me. I don't think it's for most people, but that's neither here nor there. And how I am at a very healthy weight of 160 pounds. This is the most I've ever weighed in my life, um, about between 21 to 22% body fat. It feels good. It feels good. Especially as someone who's been like a lifetime hard gainer to know, wow, I, I can indeed weigh this much. I can feel so beautifully curvy. Yeah, it's fantastic. So I wanted to make this video. Um, of course, I guess you could say this advice may particularly be helpful to people that are recovering from having eaten a vegan diet. But whether or not you have eaten as a vegan, I think that this may be helpful to you. With that in mind, I do want to say that if you are a vegan and you're watching this video on how to gain weight, I, I, I don't know how to help you. Um, because when it comes to vegans, you tend to have one of the two extremes. You have people that uh, are vegans and they have insulin resistance, so they actually gain a lot of weight. They, they become overweight or obese as a vegan. And then you have people like myself where the vegan diet just starves your body of its nutrients and then you waste all weight on some of your muscles and you become very thin and dangerously thin, you know? If you are a vegetarian, this advice may be somewhat helpful, but I think that for people that eat meat, um, people who basically, you know, eat meat, eat the full spectrum of human foods, um, this will be the most helpful for you because the way that I was able to gain this weight is by eating a little bit of everything. So with that, let's get into this. So like I said, I was 127 pounds, 17% body fat. I will post a picture somewhere, if not on the thumbnail, about my uh, weight and condition. So I was basically really, really hungry when I stopped being a vegan. So I just ate everything. And particularly, I was eating a ton, a ton of fats. My body needed it. My body was so, so nutrient deficient that I just listened to my instincts and I went for those things. I stopped being a vegan in the middle of winter in New England. My body wanted to pack on the pounds. I made myself homemade eggnog with raw milk and eggs and all that jazz. I would make like 16 ounces of that with the heavy cream and all of that, that is very, that has a lot of fat in it, right? Um, I would have whole milk with heavy cream in the whole milk. Um, I ate cakes, not like whole cakes, but I would have like slices of carrot cake or whatever. Um, I ate bacon, I ate pork sausages, I ate eggs every single day. Um, pro par probably because I was recovering from being a vegan, I was not having a lot of fruit or vegetation during that time because my body was kind of sick of it. The only fruits that I could tolerate at that time was like grapefruit and I think like apples. And then the only vegetables that I really had was like string beans, carrots, potatoes or a tuber, but things like that. Like I wasn't having broccoli, I wasn't having whatever. I ate a lot of red meat and a lot of seafood. 
Um, particularly for seafood, I, I really like shrimp. I like salmon. Uh, I like fish as a whole. So I was eating a lot of that. And for the red meats, um, some people consider pork a white meat, but I was eating a lot of pork. I was eating a lot of beef, um, pork and beef and lamb. I was really drawn to that. I didn't have chicken for like almost two months. Um, not to say you can't eat chicken, of course, but if your goal is especially to be able to gain weight, to be able to put on weight, chicken is one of those leaner meats. So if you're going to have it, you want to go for the parts of chicken that um, are fattier. So that's like your legs and your thighs, right? Not so much so the breast. Um, I did have rice. I didn't have it excessively, but I had it. And also, I basically tried to put butter or a source of fat into everything. I cooked with butter and ghee. Um when i had rice i put butter in my rice when i made vegetables i put butter in my vegetables like i said that was largely due to my body desperately needing nutrition but um even if you aren't emaciated from having been a vegan it's good to add that butter because one yes on a basic physics level you get more calories but it also does help with nutrient absorption and again it'll help you to sustain your weight a lot of the times people are concerned about gaining too much weight at once, right? Uh, perhaps not gaining weight in the way that you would like. That tends to happen um, from what I notice when people tend to gain, when people tend to have the sugars and the carbohydrates con constitute a significant portion of what they eat. When I was um, recovering from being a vegan, most of what I ate in a day was fats. I was using chronometer for about a month because I knew that, again, I was very nutrient deficient and I wanted to make sure that I was on the right track towards giving my body what it needed. So I was tracking what I ate for like the first month, maybe month and a half. The low end of uh, fats for me in a day was like 30%. The most I've ever eaten in a day was like 70-ish percent. The average was like 50%. So a lot of what I ate was fats. And then I'd say maybe like 20 to 30% was proteins. And then the remainder was carbs. So that's just the way my body felt drawn. But truly, like you, you can gain the weight by eating the carbohydrates. But if you want to gain, if you want to gain weight in um, a more desirable distribution, you should actually eat the fat. Um, fat does not make you fat. <laughs> that is something that I really want to say. We got to break against the anti-fat propaganda. Fat does not make you fat. Um, sugars tend to actually make you fat. So yes, a lot of that. Um, enjoy your fat, your butter, your ghee, you can use your olive oil, incorporate fats into every meal. If you want to have fruit, have the fruit with some yogurt. Uh, you can turn your mangoes into a mango lassi. Um, have it, have some fruit with some cheese. However it is that you do it, you want to incorporate fats with every meal. Um, it's really good for your memory as well and your focus, especially things like eggs because of the choline and etc. Um, yeah, you may even notice that your brain is working better. Like we actually need a lot of fats. Our brain is a lot. It's a lot of fat. Fat is such an important um, macromolecule. Lipids are so important. And unfortunately, due to the diet culture, uh, fat has really been demonized, even though it is very, very important, a very important building block to our uh, constitution as human beings. Okay. So that's basically it in the diet regard. If you're eating a wholesome way with plenty of good dietary fats, right, um, you will do fine. Fats that I personally avoid, um, and if you do the research, you may want to avoid it yourself. Uh, seed oils. So things like canola oil, uh, what are them? All the, it's like the cotton seed oil, all of those types of oils. The oils were like you can't get them like without having to essentially expeller press them. Fruit oils are fine. You, you can extract the oil from an olive. You can extract the oil from an avocado. You can even taste the oils when you eat them, right? Or even from a palm for like palm oil, right? But corn, do you taste oil when you eat corn? Yes, corn has oils. All plants have oils like volatile oils and stuff like that. But if it's not something where the oil is inherent, it is not something that I think we should be having in excess. And again, it's not just my personal thoughts. I highly recommend researching into the effects of um, seed oils on our bodies. I also really, really recommend the book Deep Nutrition, I believe by Kate Shanahan. I have a copy of it and it goes into extensive detail about the effects of the seed oils on our bodies. Um, yes, so there's that. Um, the second part is exercise. I uh, made a point to sign up for my local um, YMCA 
and that's where I worked out. I worked out just two days a week there and then one day a week I would do body weight exercises at home. When I was at the gym, I basically just focused on progressive overload. Um, I especially kept in mind that my body was a lot weaker at that time, so I wasn't like trying to push myself, you know. My walk, so I also walked to the gym. So walking to the gym was essentially my warm up. Then I would do the types of exercises that I really enjoyed. So I did like leg presses, I did like bicep curls, tricep type work. I did like the one legged squats, <laughs> things of that effect. Um, and I did that twice a week. And then again, when I was at home, I would just do like push ups, tricep dips, whatever I can do with just my body. I really like doing exercises where I'm more so just using my body and not using the machines excessively. Although at the gym, it's kind of a coin toss, you know, I found that that was very helpful because it um, it's really good to work out. It's really good to uh, build that muscle. You know, you don't necessarily have to aim for like a quote unquote bulky look and for women or people of the female variety, um, it is hard for us to actually have a super bulky look. So if naturally, so if that's something that you are concerned with, um, you don't have to be the way that our bodies are comprised. Um, it, it's not going to happen. I, I promise you. <laughs> um, yeah. Even when I was an athlete and I was a cross country runner, um, my body was not bulky by any stretch of the imagination. It was just fit toned, but not necessarily bulky. Um, so I did that. And again, it was very helpful. Some of the weight that I gained was definitely muscle weight, especially as I was regaining my muscle mass. Um, but I did find over time that I wanted to take a bit of a break from the gym. So I had, and I wanted to do more of what I consider to be like functional exercise. So more yoga, more just working with my body weight, uh, more going on long walks, jogging. I eventually want to like enroll in swim classes, things like that. There's nothing wrong with going to the gym, but I do like the idea of achieving fitness from just being active. So like even in my household, you know, really squatting, cleaning my house, like top to bottom, you know, that actually is a huge workout, gardening, things of that effect, keeping your body active, using your muscles, that way they have a sense of tone and definition. And then when it comes to just other things, try not, you know, try to keep your stress to a minimum, um, take care of yourself pour love into yourself, um, make sure you get enough sleep, and also that your quality of sleep is good. I feel like these are just general, like, good health advice, but if our body is in a stress state, it really does affect our metabolism, and it can affect our ability to either lose weight or to gain weight. But it is possible to gain weight as a hard gainer. I, I'm a, a testament to that. Ever since I was a child, I had always been very, very tall, and on the, um, side of being underweight and now I am not underweight at all and it's really cool like I love looking at myself in the mirror and seeing my beautiful curves and it's so funny because not that I'm concerned about my weight like from what I understand with my height I think the beginning of being overweight would be like 175 pounds and I mean it takes effort to gain a whole another 15 pounds so that's probably not happening but the fact that I'm actually at a point in my life where I'm like wow okay I have to be mindful to not weigh more than 175. 175 was never even something that was in my concept of imagination, you know? So yeah, it's really, really good here. Um, as I've said many times in my videos, I'm very, very, very happy that I am not a vegan. Um, it feels good. And um, I guess just to give an example of what a day in eating might look like for me, but of course I recommend that you tailor it for you. Yeah, I'll give a few examples. So the days that I commute to work, um, I tend to have hard-boiled eggs, smoked salmon, a slice of sourdough bread with butter if I feel like having bread, some fruit, and raw milk. The days that I um, am at home, I do the same thing but with bacon because I love bacon. <laughs> um, the days that I'm at home, because I'm not as physically active, I tend to not really have a lunch. It just tends to be breakfast and dinner. Dinner really varies. Sometimes I have Jamaican food, sometimes I have Haitian food, sometimes I have Italian food. It just feels like, just depends on what I feel like making, but yes, I am of Jamaican and Haitian descent, so that tends to be what I cook. Whether it's uh, rice with curry chicken and some vegetables, or if it's du blanc and sauce poignois and poulain sauce, it just depends on what I feel like having. Um, and dessert. Oh yeah, I love having ice cream for dessert. I'm very picky. I really like the Hajin Dawes ice cream and I particularly like vanilla, vanilla bean, or the matcha. I like that it's not overly processed and that it's pretty easy on my stomach. Uh, like I said, 
uh, I drink a lot of raw milk. I drink like two gallons of milk a week. <laughs> that That is my norm. Um, there are some times where I drink even more than that. But yes, milk is very helpful for building your body in a uh, very healthful, um, strong way. Yeah. So basically, it's how you eat, it's how you move. That is how I was able to gain a pretty good amount of weight with a body composition that I quite like um, in about six months. But I would say that a significant portion of the weight gain happened within the first three months or so. I might include a little thing on the side with like the date, uh, my body fat percentage, and my weight because I was keeping track in my own like personal journal um, just for you guys to see how things had changed over time. So yeah. Thank you for listening. Uh, please, feel to, please feel free to leave um, any other advice if you have it, and I wish you the best. Take care.